Please tell us the story of your phenomenal success. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. My phenomenal success. Well, it was this way. Mr. Barclay, <laughs> Amalgamated Railroads dropped to 127. You've just lost $900,000. Well, that's all right. You just take it out of the petty cash. Mr. Right Barclay. On. I was going to say, yes. Here is the doctor from the insurance company. Oh, yes, yes. It yes, isn't yes, every yes. day we have an examination for a $20 million policy. Now, uh, let's see. I was going to tell you, boys. Uh, Open your mouth, please. Mm -hmm. Say, ah, 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 Now, let me see. Oh, uh, what was the last thing I said? Ah, ah. Uh, I wasn't talking to you. I'm talking to these reporters. Mr. Barkley. Yes? V.J. Roth is on the phone, and he still wants to buy your capital holdings for $3 million. Well, well you tell him I ain't interested. Uh, if he wants to buy, he'll have to pay my price. Two million dollars. Yes, sir. Hmm. Roth trying to pull a fast one on me. Why should I sell to him for three million dollars? Come in. Oh, it's you again, huh? Get away from me, get away. Now, what are you going to tell you, boys? Why should I sell to him for three million dollars when I can sell to somebody else for two million? But, Mr. Barkley, why take two million when you can get three million? Why, certainly it's a lot more money. I'll tell you why. You see, if I sell for three million dollars, I gotta pay four million dollars tax. But if I sell for two million, I only have to pay two and a half million dollar taxes. <laughs> Incredible! <laughs> well, that's really figuring things out. <laughs> what a brave! That's why Mr. Barkley's where he is. That's right. That's right, Mr. Barkley. Yeah. Don't move. I'll be back. There's something wrong. Oh, uh, no. Where was I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Let me start. Oh, well, see, it's a long story. It all began when I was a prominent restaurant owner, you see. And my establishment was located uh, on one of the main roads leading into Hollywood. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to Hollywood by any chance, are you? I'm on my way. And I could see it in your face that you wanted to be a grammar gal. Have your name up in great big bright lights. It's been done. My friend is practically a star and she'll be a big help to me. Mm -hmm. So that's why you left home, huh? Too bad. Well, what are you going to eat when you eat? Oh, uh, could I see a menu, please? Yeah. I don't need no menu. It's all right here in my head. We have hamburgers, egg burgers, cheeseburgers, nutty burgers, giant burgers, and goose burgers. <laughs> and coffee. And what? Coffee. <laughs> Well, in that case, I'll just have coffee and a cheese sandwich on whole wheat. Huh. Yeah, and a cheeseburger. Coming up with a bun on. <laughs> Young lady, you're only 30 miles from Hollywood. But take my advice and go back to your home, wherever it is. Oh, I couldn't do that. Howdy, young fella. Uh, what'd it be? I'll have some jumbo shrimp, please. Jumbo shrimp? How about some nice uh, cream lobster? Fine, I'll have that instead of the jumbo shrimp. Listen, buddy, if I had that, I'd eat it myself. Oh, well, I'll, uh, I'll settle for a cup of black coffee, then. So, one jabber coming up without. Uh, are you sure you wouldn't like a nice juicy hamburger? Just the coffee. How's the sandwich? Very good. Say, I've uh, changed my mind. Fix me one of those hamburgers, special with all the trimming. Yes, sir. <laughs> now you're talking. Hey, Pooch. Oh. That's a boy. Hey, he's a nice dog. I've always liked these, uh, uh... What kind is he? I'm sure I wouldn't know. You know, the, uh, the Emperor Waltz is my favorite. I like Strauss, don't you? Strauss? Who's he, another crooner? Oh, excuse me, I'll dish up the hamburger. Well, now that we're alone, how about Well, you? here you are, my D. Luke's model. 
And boy, what a model. A, a treat for the inner man. Looks delicious. Okay, you're going to like it. Right. It's all right. Do you mind? Why, no. I guess he's really hungry. <laughs> I can see he's been trained. Does he know any more tricks? Why don't you ask the dog? Uh, maybe if you played that waltz again. Customers as pretty as she is? No. And uh, too bad about her. She, she's just another kid looking for fame. Probably will wind up with a broken heart. I've seen him come and go for years. Now, when I was in Hollywood... Is she on her way to Hollywood? Well, that's what she told me. I was going to say, when I was sorry, in Hollywood... I have to run. Hey, wait for your chain. Keep it. What are you doing here? You're in the wrong car. Don't worry, we'll find that little mistress of yours. I want to see her again, too. Move over. You having a driver's license? <laughs> and so, Martha was on her way to Hollywood, to the land of make-believe, the glamorous mecca of enchantment. Hollywood, where paupers become princes and shop girls become queens. Fascinating Hollywood, with its castles and its swimming pools and its gaiety and romance. Yes, Martha was on her way to Hollywood, to the fabulous world of the movies. Hollywood, where careers are born and hearts are broken. She was another one of the never-ending stream that travels a gilded path to make their dreams come true. I told you at your word, and I'm your new house guest. I'm just dying to see your chateau. A chateau? Oh, yeah. Golly, you're here, so you might as well know the truth. Don't look now, but um, this is it. You... You call this a... Well, you got to believe in signs, don't you? There are the six suites. I see. And uh, what you wrote about a swimming pool... Oh, uh, that. Uh, well, there it is. Only you've got to be a bird and a small one. <laughs> <laughs> I must say you uh, misrepresented things just a little. Well, Mother always told me I had a good imagination. Come on and see the rest of the place. I live in suites. I mean, bungalows, too. Boy, I enjoyed that sun bath. I just finished a picture last night. These diggings are only temporary until I get my break. It must be thrilling. What must be thrilling? Being a real actress like you. Uh-uh, hold the fort. Stop me if I'm wrong, but uh, you came to Hollywood to get into pictures. Why not? You did it. That's what you think. Do you know what I am? I'm a stand-in. Do you know what that is? No. They light me up with those hot lamps for the star. When they get ready to shoot the scene, I step out and she steps in. She's the one you see on the screen. I've never acted in a picture yet. I hate to disillusion you, kid, but it's a tough racket out here. I know it won't be easy, but it'll be different with me. I'm positive I'll get my break immediately. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, you'll need a roof over your head, so you might as well stay here. Thanks a lot. And when I get my home in Beverly Hills, you can stay with me. I can hardly wait. Hello, beautiful! Hi, chick. I'll be with you in a minute. Come on in. 
Who's he? That's Chick Jones, my weak moment. And I do mean weak. What happened to him? Oh, he's what's known as a stuntman in pictures. He's always breaking an arm or a leg or something. Hey, hurry up, will you? I gotta go out and get a steak for this eye. You're in. We'll go along with you. We'll have ours on a plate. Come on, Martha. <laughs> Sorry, miss. He won't see you. Thank you. I'm sorry, girls. I can only use one of you. Thank you very much. Oh, what news about those planes? Oh, don't he says. Yes? Well, that's fine. All right, keep in touch with me. Goodbye. Before another phone rings, let me tell you. Hold the calls, Joseph. This script. You know what you can do with it. What do you mean? Throw it away. I resign, I'm finished, I'm through, and furthermore, I think I will quit. You've already thought you'd quit six times this week. Someday I'm going to take you at your word. I will not waste my genius directing this version. The dialogue is terrible. It's full of accents. Oh, I wish silent pictures would only come back. Come on, don't dilly dally. Don't sit here. Get some fresh brains. You've already had every writer on a lot now. How about that new one from New York, Larry Winters? Never heard of it. Yes, who's he? Who hired him? You did when you were in New York last week. Don't you remember that night at the store club? Yes, yes, I'm afraid I do remember. Uh, get him over here, Josephine. Yes, sir. All right, all right, come on now. What about your sets? Ah, yes, yes, yes. They're too small. They're too small. I want the Grand Central Station the same size as the real thing with 14 trains running around. You're crazy. That would be more expensive than the original. <laughs> as usual, to be spinching pennies, eh? What do you mean? The last picture you made about the Rough Riders cost me more than the War of 1898. Oh, that. <laughs> Well, that was a small war. Here's Larry Winters for you. Mr. Lavish? Oh, now I place you. Oh, Mr. Winters, this is one of my directors, Mr. Cedric Boris. Hello. I've heard about you. And who hasn't? Well, you probably don't know it, but this fellow wrote the smash hit of New York last year. Mm. Terrific. Mm. By the way, what was it? Grandfather's Follies. You ought to know that, Mr. Lavish. Your studio bought the thing. Never heard of it. Well, it only played a year on Broadway. Grossed over a million dollars. Had two companies out in the road. Oh, come, come, gentlemen. Let's don't dilly dally. What about my picture? Well, as you'll gather from Mr. Boris, we're in a crisis here. In three weeks, we start shooting and we need a story about Hollywood. Something new and different. Well, what's that got to do with me? I'm busy adapting my play to the screen. Yes, yes. Well, you just forget that for a while. And I want to tell you something. As a reward, I'll assign you to a big production next fall. It's going to be all about Napoleon. Ah, uh, there was a great lover. Gentlemen, please, what about my picture? Oh, stop worrying. Winters will do it. Now, wait a minute. I've only been in Hollywood four days. I don't know anything about the town. What difference does that make? You've got to do it. I'm down to my last writer. All right, if you put it that way, I'll see what I can do. But I won't guarantee anything. Such modesty in the writer? He can be good. Your breakfast, sir. Thank you, Jenkins. Come on, Amber. Sit down. Congratulations, sir, on your coming nuptials. What in the world are you talking about? You've been keeping it a secret, eh? There's a squib about it today in the Hollywood Tatler. There's not a bit of truth to this, believe me. Oh, too bad, sir. Too bad. I'm so sorry. It's all a lot of publicity. Will there be anything else, sir? No, thanks. Unless you can tell me what makes this place called Hollywood tick. It's always been my contention, sir, but Hollywood is not a place. It's a state of mind. Well, there's only one way to find out, and we're going to start with Hollywood Boulevard. Come on, Emperor. And I 
can't stand around here all day and talk to you. I gotta sell these papers. Well, here, I'll fix that. I'll take them all. There you are. Oh, brother, that did it. Well, is she right down there? Yeah. That's a brown derby. And over there, my climbers. And right across the street over there is Sardi. Listen, I'm not looking for a place to eat. I want to know what goes on. Who do you see every day? What happens? Well, this is Hollywood and Vine, where the stars dine and wine. Hey, wait a minute. What did I tell you about stars passing here? There's Lassie going home. Lassie. You know, you got a great imagination. Well, in this town, you gotta have a... You did all right with those uh, tourists today. As you know, back tomorrow, same time, same dog. That's the kind of a gag that killed Vaudeville. Here's your money. Aren't you gonna give the lady a change? Change? Oh. You! I found you! What are you talking about? Don't you remember me? Wait. Here's the dog. That calls for another hamburger. Sorry, I have a dinner date. But just a minute! Wait! You forgot something. Look! Don't bother me. Shut the door! If you don't stop following me, I'll call a policeman. So this is where you live, huh? It's none of your business. Children and dogs welcome. Emperor, I think you've got something there. Let's find the office. Say, lady, I wonder if you could show me one of these. Oh! 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 He left this very doorway over 30 years ago. Oh, that's too bad. I wondered if I... I asked him to get me a pound of butter at the corner grocery. It was only 21 cents a pound. Oh, that's pretty high. Say, I noticed... Oh, some... Mortimer. He just loved my cooking. He was absolutely crazy about my tutti fruity cake. It would just melt in your mouth. I can imagine. <laughs> I wanted to rent one of these cottages if you have one available. Oh, you want to rent? Yes. Well, why didn't you say so? Come this way, please. This was always Mortimer's favorite suite. Over there is the bedroom. Oh, I think it's charming. I'll take it. Yeah. Well, well, remember, if you want anything, just call me. I will, thanks. What a resemblance. I just can't get over it. Well, you see, when Larry moved to the Chateau La Rue, he didn't tell the studio nothing about it. So they didn't know where to find him. You are supposed to be engaged to him. Where is he? Why don't you ask me something easier? I've been trying to find the answer to that one for days. Hello, Jenkins. This is Miss Mason. Oh, has Mr. Winters returned as yet? Uh, no, not since he popped in last week and had me pack a bag for him, then popped right off again. But where did he go? Uh, Mr. Winters gave strict orders not to divulge his whereabouts. Well, well, well what, what did he say? I think his butler knows, but he won't talk. I don't know how I stand it. Look at me. I'm shaking like an aspirin leaf. Oh, well. All great men suffer thorns on their sides. <coughs> Such is the price of fame. Just like my mother. A gorgeous mess of muscles. I wish Mortimer would come back so we could all relax. I've heard so much about him. He must have been quite a man, Fanny. Oh, he was out of this world. May I come in? I saw the door open, so Well, I... really, this is going too far. Well, but I live here. Can't you be a little bit neighborly? We've been looking for you for two weeks. Ever since you left us at the hamburger stand. I should think you'd be glad to see your dog. My dog? It isn't mine. Not yours? No. Well, what do you know about that? Why didn't you tell me before? You didn't ask. <laughs> so that's why you were following me. 
Yes, to return the dog. He's a cute little mutt. After all this, why don't you adopt him? I think I will. What do you call him? Remember the Emperor Waltz? Uh, yes, I love it. Oh, I, I mean... It always reminds me of our first meeting, too. So does this little fellow. That's why I named him Emperor. Hello, Emperor. Oh, he's here. Come in and meet him. Oh, girls, I want you to meet Mortimer. I mean, my new tenant. This is Gloria Devine, and this is Martha Manning. Martha? So that's it. But I didn't get your name. I'm Larry Winters. I, uh, I mean Summers. Get your season straight. Which is it? It's, uh, Summers. Oh, there's a lot of warmth to that name. Oh, if you were only Mortimer. So, that's why I came to Hollywood. But as Gloria says, it's not so easy to get a break. I don't know how they'd ever overlook you. That happens to lots of people. What about yourself? Oh, I'm doing all right. Uh, that is, I, I mean, well, I'm a writer. That's interesting. Have you ever sold anything? <laughs> Not exactly, but I have hopes. I'd love to read one of your stories. Oh, you wouldn't like any of my stuff. It's all very dull. Hey, what do you know? This is, this is the last plate. <laughs> It was nice of you to stay and help me with them. Oh, not at all. It's been fun. I love washing dishes. You do? Yeah. Say, I think I can get you a job. A job? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Clumsy. This cannot go on. You've already broken six dollars worth of crockery. Yes, I, I know. Yes, you know. But do you know that it comes out of your salary? You've got to be more careful. I was told this morning that you were an experienced fountain attendant. Huh. What a masterpiece of overstatement. Huh. Hey, you. You. Who, me? Yeah, you. Bill me a banana surprise. A banana surprise? Shh, shh, shh. I'm sorry, we're all out of surprises. How would you like to have uh, the, uh, something else? I don't want nothing else. Unless it's a banana flip frappy. Maybe you'd better have the surprise. He wants a banana surprise. Hmm? All right. Oh. <laughs> Well, will you make it? Well, all right, I'll... <clears throat> I'll start it, but of course, you've got to learn how to make it yourself anyways. Now, as good a time as any. First, you'll take a banana and half it. <clears throat> no, 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 not like that. Here, watch me. <clears throat> That's the first thing you do. You pee. <laughs> you peel it. You peel it, you understand. Here, take this. <clears throat> then you take a dish. <clears throat> then you cut the banana in half like that, you see. Then you put the two pieces in the dish. And then in the center, <clears throat> you put a large mound of cream. <clears throat> Well, don't stand there, stupid. Get me a scoop of vanilla. That's it. Could you change a $20 bill for me? Thank you very much. I know, I know. Vanilla. Two scoops. Now, you carry on and follow my directions. Now, you add a little vinegar. Vinegar? That's right. Hmm. A little vinegar. <laughs> now, let me see. Where was I? Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Sprinkle, sprinkle with salt and uh, pepper. And to top it all, Cover with mayonnaise. 
Let it be good, brother. Uh, put some whipped cream on that. Finish it off. Always use a few cherries. On that? We always finish a banana surprise with a few cherries. <clears throat> it's about time. This is terrific. You're improving. Make me another. Day. Where'd you get the script? It's Larry. But he doesn't know I have it. He moved some of his things in the other night and Fanny found this in his wastebasket. He should have more faith in himself. Why, is it any good? I think it's swell. It's a shame he can't sell it. Yeah, I'd like to see him get a break. You would too, wouldn't you? You know I would. Hey, I've got an idea. I know the assistant to the assistant story editor at the lavish studios. Maybe I can get you an appointment. Gloria, that would be wonderful. Oh, don't say anything to Larry about this. I want to surprise him later. Sure. Oh, I bet that's Chick. Hello, Larry. Good evening, ladies. Hello. Hello, Martha. Doing anything tonight? Am I? I'll say you are. We're going to celebrate. Dinner and cocktails at Lucy's and later dancing at the Bacombo. But Larry... Look, I got my first paycheck. That is what there is left of it. Federal old age, social security. And besides, dear old Reggie didn't forget the breakage. But you can't afford it. Maybe we should go to a movie instead. Well, fine, we'll do that too. Where's the paper? <laughs> nope, that's the wrong section. But I still... Listen, Angel, I can always wash dishes. I'm getting good at it. <laughs> oh, there's our song. Martha, about that career you want, I have a friend at one of the studios, and I'm sure he'd be able to help you. I've changed my mind about it. You see, uh, that's not what I want at all. I've forgotten everything since I met you. Have you, Larry? Seems as though we've been together always. But it's really only three weeks. And that's when I started to live. Watch that. The feathers on the arrow. Look here, Rembrandt. Keep your mind on your work. Yes, Mr. Allen. One glass, 19 cents. Summers, <clears throat> customer. Sorry, I, 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 I just remembered something. You're not here to think. Wait on the gentleman. Yes, but I... I Don't argue. Wait on the gentleman. Yes, sir. What'll it be, sir? A uh, lime coke, please, with a dash of lemon. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh. Mr. Winters! Summers is my name. Mr. Winters, the studio has been trying to get in touch with you for days. 
What are you doing here? I don't know what you're talking about. Please leave me alone. I've got my work to do. Oh, Mr. Winters, have you gone balmy in the crumpet? Don't you recognize me? Look at me. Me. It's me. I'm Jenkins, your butler. What's he talking about? The poor man's crazy. He thinks he's my butler. Oh, this is frightful. This is terrible. I've got to do something. What I do? I get a doctor. I must. I must. It's probably amnesia. That's what it is. Amnesia. You see, he's sick. Probably indigestion. Hmm. Balmy in the crumpet? Huh. Must have been something he drank. If this keeps up, I'll need a doctor. Small, it's a big picture. Next, next. This is going overboard. Next, uh, this is going overboard. Next. This is not a hunting picture. Next. Ah! Well, uh, a dog with an accent. No, no. They're not the type. They look too much like dogs. Mm -mm. Uh, forget the dog test. Uh, let's turn around the camera and shoot this way. Uh, but first, get rid of this wall. But Mr. Morris, that's the studio wall. Oh, it is? Well, uh... Turn around the other way and let's see what we can do over Hey! Here. Get that mud out of here! Hey! I don't know what you are nor why you are, but maybe you've got here. Mm. Mm. You admit it? Well, that's good, that's good. Oh, we're going to make a test of this one. Get rid of the other one. Yes, Mr. Boyd. There's no title page on the script. You say a friend of yours wrote it? Yes. He works in the same drugstore I do at Hollywood and Vine. But he's an excellent writer, and I'm sure you'll think so, too. Well, I'll read it, and you'll hear from us. I'm sure the studio will be interested in it, definitely. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Lavish. It'll mean a lot to me. Hello, get me to B's office. Quickly. Hello, to B's. I know where we can find our missing writer. Well, what are you waiting for? Get over here right away. This dog look great in front of the camera. I shall call to Bees and tell him that we have found what I've been looking. Mr. Boris, the dog has disappeared. What? No dog can do that to me. Who is its owner? I don't know, Mr. Who Boris. Who is its agent? I don't know, Mr. Don't Boris. you know anything? I don't know. Mm, let's don't dilly dally. Go and find that dog. Mm. Yes, Mr. Oh. Here you are, Mr. Boris. Emperor, am I excited? But you wouldn't understand, would you? Nothing ever happens to a dog. <laughs> Move over. There he is. <laughs> Just look at him. Yes, it's too true to be funny. But he looks natural. When is, what is the meaning of this? Where's this story? Well, I'm doing a little research. I'm working on it. Larry, stop this nonsense and get out from behind that counter. I'd like a banana surprise. Where is my script? How can we shoot the picture? I haven't written it yet. It's all in my head. I can't shoot your head, but I'd like to. Gentlemen, please lower your voices. You'll frighten the customer. Ain't I a customer? Where is my banana surprise? Shh. 
I want a banana surprise. Quiet. Now, gentlemen, please. <clears throat> Quiet, please. You can't get away with this. I pay you $2,000 a week to write me a story. And what happens? He turns out to be a soda jerk. <laughs> I told you he wasn't no good. This saddles it. You're fired. Tell but to me says you're fired. He means you're fired. But, Mr. Lavish, I... I never want to see you again. I never could see you. Come, Anne. I have more to say to you, and I'll say it later. But, Mr. Lavish, I... I, I... What do I have to do to get a banana surprise? Here. I beg your pardon. You were looking for Larry? Come and sit down. I expect him any moment. He sometimes has to work late at the studio. You know how these writers are. You must be mistaken. Larry's a very fine writer, but uh, he isn't in a studio. <laughs> that is, not yet. He works in the same drugstore I do. You're not too bright, are you? Larry Winters is a writer at the Lavish Studio. Believe me, I should know, because I'm also under contract there. It's Larry Summers who lives here. You must have the wrong person. I haven't made any mistake. You have. I don't know what you're talking about. Excuse me. Hello, Angel. There's something I want to ask you and right now. How do you do? Anne, what are you doing here? I might ask you the same question. What are you doing here? But how did you find this place? Really, you insult my intelligence. They told me at the drugstore. I was just about to tell this young lady about us. This is ridiculous. Don't believe it, Martha. So this is the reason I haven't seen much of you. Well, no little mouse like her is going to take you away from me. She might as well know that you're my property and this is our engagement ring. Larry, how could you? Why did you lie to me? Wait! Oh, let her go. That settles that. Oh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Where's Martha? I want to talk to her. Haven't you done enough, you two-timer? Scram! Yes, uh, that was a bad break for Larry. You see, because by this time, he had fallen head over heels in love with Martha, and Martha the same with him. <laughs> but through some misunderstanding, he was going out of his life forever. Any news to be? Where is he? Where is he? Here I am. What's the matter? Now is no time to play hide-and-seek. Any news? No, there's no trace of the dog. Fate. Fate worse than overtime. Sabotage, I tell you. First we're having trouble with the writer, finally we get a good script, then the little dog disappears. <laughs> well, get another dog. This delay is costing me $50,000. In one word, no other dog would do. I must have that dog. Why not put an ad in the paper? Now you said something. Remind me to give you a raise. As a queen. Quiet. Quiet, quiet! Yes, sir. <laughs> Imagine paying 500 bucks just to find a little mutt. Mutt? What'll they do next? It can't be. What it is. Hey, Martha! Martha! Come here! What's the matter, Gloria? Get a load of this. Taxi! Taxi! I just can't believe it. Imagine a dog like Emperor getting the break that we've been howling for. But what'll we do? I only have a half an hour for lunch. Oh, forget about that job. We're in the chips now. Taxi, take us to the lavish studio. Studio? Yes, this dog's got to see a man. Let me tell you something, Mr. Boris. If we don't hear anything about that dog by tomorrow, we'll substitute a horse. <laughs> Here it is. Baby, sweetheart, darling, at last I have found you. Who's in command? Did you not see me? I'm here, Uncle Simon. Well, 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 my little star. Well, let's don't tell it down. We can start the picture right away. Uh-uh. Not until the contract is signed. By the way, where is that 500? Well, give it a thousand. Yes, a thousand. What am I saying? All right, places, places. Places, places, girls. Come on, let's get started. Come on. Fine, fine. Ready? All right. Start the playback! Start the playback! I'm ready, girls. He's ready, girls! Ready? Commence! Action! Thank you. 
such bad company. Oh, but you're not, darling. You know, I have some wonderful plans for us. Hello, how are you? Well, if it isn't my firm and not himself. Hello, Mike, sit down. No wonder you look radiantly happy. This must be wedding bell. I still have the ring. Congratulations. This calls for champagne on the house. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, thank you. Oh, by the way, have you seen what's happening to your studio? No. Listen to this. Lavish studio sued for $500,000 damages in lawsuit over ownership of Emperor, the famous dog store. Martha Manning, who claims she owns the dog, has also been named by the plaintiff. Hm. I always knew that girl would cause trouble. Here we are. What am I doing? Drinking my own champagne? Why not? If you refuse to settle, my client will get an injunction against your company, prohibiting you from showing the picture. She has to prove she owns the dog first. You're the studio attorney, do something! Calm yourself, two bees. Wilson's client realizes you have a big investment in the picture, and she doesn't want to disrupt the career of the dog. Wilson has advised Miss Wrighthouse to consider a fair settlement out of court. Well, I'm not going to settle. You can tell that to you, Miss Whitehouse. Very well. My client has no other choice. She'll sue for $500,000. But this is a holdup. I won't pay it. I won't pay it. Oh, no, I won't. You're fired. <laughs> Surely, after hearing Miss Manning's testimony, there can be no question about the ownership of this dog. That is all, Emperor. I'd like to call Mr. Boris to the sand. Ha, ah, that's me. Now I will fix everything. Yes, there goes everything. You're Mr. Boris? And who else? Now let's down the Lidali, please. Don't talk foolish. The witness will please confine himself to answering the questions. <laughs> I'm Cedric Oscar Boris. You directed the first picture in which this dog appeared, known as Emperor 
Goes Hollywood? I certainly did, and it was colossal. But I still wish silent pictures would come back. That this should happen to me, what shouldn't happen to a dog. <laughs> Order. Order in the court. Mr. Burroughs. Can you swear that this is the dog that was starred in your picture? I can swear. And you can say that with a straight face? My face is always straight. That is all. Don't you want to ask me anything else? That is all. All right, cut, but don't print. <laughs> Order, please. Will Mr. Lavish please take the stand? You're Mr. Lavish, the head of the Lavish Studios? I am Lavish Studios. Did the appearance of the dog increase the financial returns of the picture? It certainly did. As a matter of fact, the dog stole the picture. Hmm. You sure it isn't the other way around that you stole the dog? I object, Your Honor. It has not been proven the dog was stolen. Objection sustained. That is all. I hope so. Mr. Wilson, I simply cannot stay here any longer. I've got to get back to my soda fountain. But we need you, Mr. Allen. You're a very important witness. <laughs> I'm a very important man. <clears throat> but all I do here is sit and sit and <clears throat> sit. I'll have you call right now. Oh, thank you. I get so nervous. I just I can't wait tonight. Now, I don't know what this is all about. Furthermore, I never saw this dog in all my life. Remember, Mr. Allen, you're under oath. Uh, don't point your finger at me. <laughs> Order. Order. <laughs> Proceed, Mr. Wilson. Do you know Mr. Winters? Know him? Huh. Winters or summers, he gave me a nervous breakdown. Do you ever remember seeing this dog come into the drugstore with Miss Manning? Well, lots of dogs came into the store every day, but <laughs> not with Miss Manning. <clears throat> that is all. That is good. Now I can go back to my clients. Dogs. Pictures. <laughs> and now, Your Honor, before calling my client to the stand, a charitable and sympathetic woman, I'd like to remind you that the disappearance of her treasured pet has been a great blow. Her life, formerly filled with the beauty and the joy of living, has been blighted. Miss Abigail Wrighthouse. Take the stand, Miss Wrighthouse. <laughs> Looks as if she just got off a broom. Hey, do you know we broke all speed records? I only hope we're in time. So do I. I never was in the courthouse, and I don't... Come on, Pop! I'm a-coming, I'm a-coming, wait. I love that little dog like my own flesh and blood. Continue, please. Since she was stolen from me, my heart's been broken. I object, Your Honor. Objection sustained. <laughs> Order. Order in the court. Proceed with the testimony, Mr. Wilson. That is all, Miss Wrighthouse. Your witness. No cross-examination. <laughs> That's our case, Your Honor. We rest. Proceed with your defense, Mr. Hudson. Your Honor. I will call as our first and only witness, Pop Barkley. Mr. Barkley, take the stand, please. You say you run a hamburger stand. That's right. I sell hamburgers, aceburgers, cheeseburgers, nutty burgers, giant burgers, and goose burgers. <laughs> We're not interested in what you serve, Mr. Barkley. Okay. But they're mighty good. <laughs> I'll try one. Do you uh, recognize this dog? <laughs> Why, sure. Why, he hung around my joint for months. If I hadn't fed him, he'd have starved to death. <laughs> and when that feller there, that young feller, drove off in his car with that dog, I know just as well that he had a good home. And then he gave it to his girlfriend because he was sweet on her. <laughs> <laughs> now, Pop. I want you to tell us of Emperor's former history. Hmm. Well, it, it ain't very flattering. 
Somebody gave it to Miss Rathouse when it was only a wee pup. And she told me she hated dogs that got fleas in her carpet or something like that. And she kicked it out when it was only two months old. I had that dog four months before I threw it out. Miss Rathouse. Mm -hmm. Now you see, she admits it. You have just lost your own case. <laughs> Winters, I, Winters, I want to thank you. You saved me a fortune. By the way, if you ever happen to write a good story, uh, bring it around and I'll be in the mood to buy it. Be at the studio next Monday. We'll talk over a new contract. Thanks, I'll do that. Congratulations, my friend. I understand I'm going to direct your next story. <laughs> You're not as dumb as I think you oh, are. Oh, Cedric, darling. Look, isn't it beautiful? It's an engagement ring. I bought it myself. From you? Love and kiss. <laughs> I couldn't get here any sooner. Did everything turn out all right? Yes, thanks to Larry. Let's go someplace where we can be alone. Mortimer! Fanny! Oh! Hey, wait a minute. Listen, Fanny. Wait a minute, Fanny. Get me a lawyer. Get me a whole flock of lawyers. Come back here, Mortimer! Is this your car? Nope. Is it yours? No. And whose car is it? It's, it's his. It's... Hollywood. Why didn't I stay in Flatbush? 